2012 was the first conference that we did at this location, and it was uh, Peter, myself, and John Bedini who uh, who started that. And at the first conference, I believe it was in 2012, um, one presenter who somebody who we really wanted to to have as a guest is uh, is who you're going to be uh, hearing from. And uh, the first presentation that he gave was called uh, Tesla's Hidden Discoveries, which was kind of a uh, roadmap of his path on this journey. And it kind of covered a lot of different things from his uh, background, mo you know, moving through the different ty types of work uh, uh, he's been involved with and uh, the different interesting characters um, in this field that he has personally known and um, associated with over the years. Um, he, at one presentation, like I mentioned, with Paul's talk, uh, he co-presented with Paul uh, several years back on his uh, SERPs technology, which is uh, very, very profound. One of the solid state demos that they had a few years ago, it showed um, about 50 watts of lights, incandescent light bulbs being lit for a net of uh, one watt from the input. That doesn't mean one watt is lighting 50 watts. It means like 50 watts is watt lighting 50 watts, but if you can return 49, then your net loss is one. Both of those patents have expired, and um, Jim Murray has basically given his blessing to everybody to experiment with it and learn from it. And so, on the quest to you know so-called overunity or these uh, devices that produce more work than what we have to put into it, a lot of people are on that path looking for information in that field to know more about it, but they don't even understand what unity is. Um, in this next presentation, Jim will be covering the meaning of unity in energy conversion uh, systems. Now this guy I don't have to tell you about. Uh, I've loved Nikola Tesla and his work since I was a child. And I've duplicated a lot of interesting things that he did. And uh, there's no point in really going on about Nikola Tesla because he, uh, I'm sure, is known at least to most of you in the room. And his accomplishments are so widespread that it's almost unbelievable that one man could accomplish what he did in a single lifetime. What I want to do now is to show you what kind of obstacles they were up against and how that actually fits into the evolutionary pattern of the development of this type of machinery. And I'm going to use that to make my point about the importance of the unity concept. And from that, we will move on into some areas which you may not expect are affected by this. So right now, we are aware of this list. And probably there are some that are not on this list. But these are the major ones. So you have iron losses in the stator. You have iron losses in the rotor. You have copper losses in the field windings. You have copper losses in the rotor. But I had an insight. And that insight was responsible for me developing this machine called the Dynaflux alternator. So this Dynaflux alternator is extremely different from your standard machines because it makes use of a, a rotor, which is an elliptical rotor instead of a round machine. And um, the coil placements are entirely different. There's no windings at all on the rotor. And uh, the input to drive the thing from an external source is pretty standard. So the other, the other thing that we need to look at briefly is a non-restorative work function. So to, in order to do that, we're going to just modify the original uh, system that I just explained to you. And the modification is going to consist of some miraculous angels or somebody that's up there with another device that's going to assist in the descent. I don't even worry about how it's done. I'm just doing it mathematically. So even if you have persistent evidence that you have a conversion efficiency of like 1.2 or 1.1, you know, if you keep on getting that, something's there. You know, if you do real diligent calculations and you um, make accurate measurements and you still get over unity, that's what that means, by the way. That's your over unity. So if you keep on getting over unity in your E sub C calculations, that should alert you to something exciting. Uh, my question to you is, um, are you still open to coupling 
um, the, either the Dynaflux or um, the other generator you were showing to um, existing systems that uh, would be the prime mover for your generator and see how that coupling might eventually lead to uh, you know, combination of you know your efficiencies to the efficiencies of the um, of the system that um, today would be uh, used as a prime mover for the uh, Dynaflux in this case, and possibly um, experimenting on looping it and then having a true sort of standalone system. <laughs> 